Welcome back to another episode of The Natural Herb Keeper and today we're looking at part two of the Cape York Biotope build which is what we can see here behind me. So in this episode uh, we're going to show you how we went from part one which was the finished background all the way through to what you can see here behind me at the moment. So I'm going to show you how I set up the hardscape in this tank, uh, the filtration, the plants and of course then the animals that we popped in here as well. So because all of that takes a number of weeks uh, to get everything established, you've obviously got to let your water cycle and go through that whole process. Uh, I have done it all, it's been a number of weeks, the tank's been running for a little bit now. So we're just going to jump straight in, I'm going to go back and show you how we got to this point here. So the start of any uh, tank build of course guys is the hardscape. So for that I've just got a collection of driftboard pieces that I've collected uh, over the last probably six months or so to be honest. I've been thinking about doing this tank for a while now so anytime I saw something that I thought uh, would suit what I was going for I'd collect that and I had a whole pile of that um, stashed away here and then it's just a matter of putting uh, the pieces in the tank, seeing how they fit and trying to see how they fit together. Okay, I don't really go in with a plan when it comes to hardscapes with this. Um, it's just a matter of putting the pieces together, looking if there's any natural flow of direction or lines um, and trying to think about how it would fit in the wild. Okay, so how the water would push it um, and getting something that looks fairly natural which um, I think I did with this scape here. Alrighty guys, so here we've got um, the back of the tank. So we're at the point of starting to put substrate in uh, and starting to look at that extra filtration and that plant uh, garden bed that we're gonna have back here. So it's pretty simple as you can see. We've filled the far end down there. So that's where the gap in the perspex was. Okay, so we've filled that with filter foam. The water is going to come up through there, along through this tray here, through this bit of foam, sucked through by a little power head that we've got here, and then shot back out into the tank. So this area in here is going to be fully planted. So we're going to have gravel and some substrate in there. Um, to aid that and to help with the biological filtration uh, in the tank, we've also put just some little ceramic uh, noodle things. Here they are, okay. Um, there's a little bit of activated carbon or charcoal in there as well. So what we're gonna do next is layer some substrate down in here uh, and then that will be ready for the plants to go in. So the first layer that I'm putting down in the tank is a layer of quinkin. Now a lot of people would use crushed lava rock for this layer. I couldn't get my hands on any of that so I substituted it for this quinkin which is cheap and easy to get your hands on. Basically all this layer needs to do is stop that top substrate from um, compacting too much. It allows the roots of the plants to come through and it allows an area for the beneficial bacteria to multiply which will aid in keeping all those nasties out of your tank. So it doesn't need to be too thick, a centimetre or two will do the trick for this one. So the next layer that's going down is our aqua soil. Um, I purchased a couple of bags of um, just a fairly standard generic black um, aqua soil. 
this layer here will just give the roots of the plants a little bit of extra nutrition. So I'm just gonna pop that down. I think I used three bags in total for the inside of the tank and one small bag for the planted area in the back. From there, it's just a matter of getting the substrate in. So we're using the same sand or coarse sand mix uh, that we use for the background. So that was just that stuff that was purchased from the local Bunnings, nothing flash. Uh, as you can see, it's all been very well rinsed. This stuff is really dirty. If you don't rinse it very well to start with, your tank is gonna be incredibly cloudy when you first fill it up. So spend the extra time, rinse that off to start with. Now we went for a fairly thick layer here, so it's almost an inch at the front and probably two to three inches in some places at the back. So this just means that the plants have a lot more to root into. It's also a lot easier to plant into um, deeper substrate. So most of our plants are gonna be concentrated at the back. That's why I went for that deeper level uh, at the back here. So with the substrate in, it was time to get some of the larger rocks in. Um, and when placing these, the same as placing the timber hardscape that we started with, what I'm really thinking about is what does it look like down at the local creek or river? Okay, so when you're out in the bush, um, I always take note of how the timber has fallen, how the rocks have fallen, and try to position it something similar to that. So you're thinking about how the water would run um, and, and what looks natural. Now, to do that, I think you have to have different sizes of rocks as well. You can't just have all uniformed. Um, so we've got a few very large rocks, a few sort of medium rocks, and then I'm going to start sprinkling in some of those smaller rocks down around um, the cracks and crevices. And again, that's just kind of thinking where would those smaller rocks and gravel have been washed to uh, as the, the water was flowing through and try and mimic that in where you place them. So with the majority of the hardscape all done, okay, the large rocks and everything are all in, um, all I'm going to do is shift the filter over here. While I'm doing that, I'm filling the tank up a little bit. Um, the main reason for filling it up is so we can get the plants in a little bit easier. So if the tank is half filled before we pop the plants in, um, I find that they don't fall out as often. I'll be the first to say I am nowhere near skilled at trying to um, use the tweezer method to get the plants in and all they seem to do is fall back out when I try that. So I found easy, uh, fill it up, nice deep substrate and it makes life a lot easier. For filtration on this one, I am just running a large canister filter uh, underneath, which you can see the inlet and outlet pipes on the sides here. And then of course we've got that extra filtration bed uh, in the plant area across the back as well. So I've been thinking about doing this tank build for something like six months. So that meant every time I went to the, uh, the local fish shop uh, and I saw that they had some of the plants in stock that I wanted for this tank, I'd buy them and then I've just planted them in one of my grow out tanks. So that then meant that uh, when the time came to actually plant them, these guys had been growing for a number of months. So I almost you know, doubled, sometimes even tripled the amount of plants that I had. Uh, because they've been growing for such a long time to start with. So that's a, a fairly cost effective way to do it is if you're patient and you can grow them out for a little bit first. The other bonus of course is that because they'd been um, fully submerged and growing like that for a number of months, we'd gone past that whole melt phase. So they'd already done that initial melt when you get them home from the pet shop and then they've all sprouted back from there. Now there are a few plants that um, I purchased right at the last moment as I was planting like that red lotus there so we did see a little bit of melt in those in the first couple of weeks but then um, they came back healthy and strong after that and that's a natural thing that will happen so don't get too spooked if you see some of the leaves on your plants start to um, sort of wither away and die uh, it's just that initial melt phase and they will come back from it after that. So these plants here are nothing special. I didn't know if this was actually gonna work or not. Um, so these plants I actually just found locally around the area. We've got some mangrove ferns, a few sedge grasses, uh, and even a couple of melaleuca saplings there as well. And the idea of these plants is that they're one, all natives, but two, they're natives that are found all the way around northern Queensland uh, and they're found growing in wet environments where their roots are almost constantly wet. So we're talking about wetlands, um, swampy sort of marsh areas as well. And that's what I'm recreating in this back garden bed area. 
So all I've done is pop the plants in and I'm just using then the same uh, aqua soil that we used on the second layer in the, uh, the bottom of the fish tank. So I popped that in first to give them a little bit of nutrients and then just capped it off with a layer of the same substrate that um, I used in the tank. Okay, so exactly the same sort of principle as the tank. And this area here means that those plants will have uh, water constantly around their roots. It'll flow through them, which I'm hoping will help to keep the tank nice and clean and help to absorb any of those extra nutrients that might be in the water there uh, as these plants grow up out of the tank. And I think it just gives a nice background to it there as well. Something a little bit different. So this was the last little plants that I was waiting on. Um, these arrived a few weeks after uh, the initial setup of the tank and um, they're just a pile of native plants apart from the Nepenthes. Uh, couldn't get a native version of that, but we've got a little water mill foil here. Um, we've got some of these little miniature lilies okay these are found throughout northern australia in the wetland systems provide great cover for our fish uh, the nardu the same okay this actually provides great spawning area for the fish and this is actually where my little blue eyes have been spawning in and then of course the nepenthes right out of my depth trying to grow this under lights so before they can go into the tank of course it is important to wash the roots off really well get rid of any of our soil or fertilizers that may be in there and then it's time to chuck them in the tank. So as I said, the tank had been running for quite a number of weeks before it got to this stage. And as you can see, there are already some fish in here. Um, the fish went in very quickly with this tank because the filter that I'm running on it had been running in um, another tank for about three or four months before that. So it had gone through that entire new tank cycle. Uh, it had gone through the ammonia cycle. I was of course checking my levels uh, daily and they were staying nice and healthy. So as those levels were staying nice and healthy, the rest of the fish were added and um, keep checking those of course for a number of weeks to make sure you don't get any spikes, but due to the number of plants and that filter being pre-cycled, uh, it's all been really healthy and really positive. Okay, so this is the completed project. Everything has been set up and running in here for a number of weeks now. So let's just dive in and have a quick look at uh, what's happening in here, okay? So as with any new tank build, it is expected, of course, to get a little bit of melt in your plants. And we're seeing that in this one here. There's just a fraction of melt. Some of those tips have come off. Um, but if we have an, a look down here, you can see that there are heaps of new shoots coming out, okay? So that normally happens with aquatic plants when you start to shift them. Um, some are grown uh, immersed, so out of the water. So when you do pop them back in a fully submerged environment, uh, a number of those leaves that were in the immersed state will often drop off and uh, new shoots will start to come in the fully submerged form. Now, a few little things you might have noticed. We do have a little breeder box up here. So um, the spotted blue eyes have been spawning in here already. They uh, seem to be thriving and absolutely loving this environment here. So we've popped their fry in there. Now at the moment, guys, those fry are probably like three mil long and about a mil wide if you're lucky. So I don't think my camera is going to pick that up well enough for you. But some of the fry you might be able to see. This little cutie right down here, okay. So um, my pair of bristle nose were in the tank with uh, the blue eyes previously. I shifted them over to this one and straight away they have also started spawning, okay? So dad actually is in this log right up in here. He's got his little hollow down in the back there. Uh, he's in there with another clutch of eggs by the look of it as well. So in terms of other inhabitants, you can see some of the shrimp sitting there as well. They're gonna focus, there we go, just on that log. So there are plenty of little glass shrimp uh, in here. A few snails, keeping everything nice and clean, polishing off any of that um, plant matter that has uh, sort of died back a little bit. And if we go up the top here and have a look, 
again all the plants are doing really well so the mangrove ferns are thriving uh, we've got heaps of new shoots let's go and have a look in there so we've got a heap of these new shoots growing up in here uh, the nepenthes over here well it's not looking the best i haven't grown these before let alone trying to grow them under lights but um I'm going to take it that it's been in here for a month or so now and it hasn't died as a good sign. Hopefully it'll start to throw some new pictures or some new leaves shortly. But um, other than that, everything's looking really good in this tank at the moment. All the plants and fish are thriving, uh, as you can see by all the breeding that's happening. So that does wrap us up, guys. Um, if you like the video you'd like to see more like this let me know in the comments below as always don't forget to like subscribe and share and uh, we'll see you next time on another episode of the natural herb keeper